Hey, Marcus Cosby reporting. Got a couple of good stories for you today. This is uh, while we watch, watch Hong Kong in the balance. Hong Kong civil war breaking out. Uh, they won a mild victory in the extradition bill, but it hasn't changed the minds, as you can see, of most of the Hong Kong uh, fighters, the people fighting, fighting for their liberties, fighting for the right to vote, fighting the right to not be extradited to communist to China. As Carrie Lam, the appointed, not elected, the appointed executive of Hong Kong. So we'll take a look at that story. Uh, we'll look at um, what else? Uh, not very good news for, for Julian Assange. Uh, Craig Murray was in the audience. Craig Murray, the uh, distinguished British guy was in the audience uh, for Julian Assange's court appearance. And it was not good. I mean, he wrote an extensive article about what he saw. We'll take a look at that. GOP storms out of the, storms in, storms the, the beaches of Adam Schiff's uh, illegal, private, secretive hearing in Congress to impeach the President of the United States. All done in secret, and the GOP got together. They put their marbles together, and they stormed the, uh, they stormed the, the, the conference. So we'll take a look at that, too. And 39 on the note of China, as we watch China, the Chinese bashed the shit out of the Hong Kong people. We'll look at, um, look at uh, 39 bodies found in England, all Chinese, Chinese migrants. The government uh, that somehow smuggled their way the into, in uh, order to fully were trying to get into England process. through, I think, Ireland or something. So they found 39 uh, migrant bodies, uh, victims of human traffic stuck in the back of the truck. We'll take a look at that. As we descend on Hong Kong, the great people of Hong Kong fighting for their democracy. So, Some riveting video. So let's just look at the headlines. Hong Kong withdraws Chinese extradition bill that sparked protest. Oh, so they pulled the extradition bill off the table and uh, withdrew it officially. That should make the Hong Kong people happy. That should that should uh, make the uh, protesting go away, right? right? It's over, right? They won. The protest is won, but not so, right? So. Because there's a lot of a lot of other things going on. That that was only the thing that revealed to the people that China uh, will not uh, uh, retreat. Right? They're going to take away all their rights eventually. No elections. No, you know, they're going to make a communist China, Hong Kong, uh, a democracy that was under British rule and uh, Indian rule, I guess. You know, for all those you know all those years, not Indian rule. Excuse me, British. Uh, uh, under British rule, Hong Kong, uh, uh, Hong Kong was under British rule for 100 years. So Hong Kong authorities on Wednesday scrapped the controversial extradition bill that launched months of violent protest in the uh, semi-autonomous Chinese city. Semi-autonomous? There's no such thing. That's like being a little pregnant. You are either autonomous or you are not autonomous, say the Hong Kong people. So Secretary of Security John Lee would only say the decision was made due to conflicts in society. (laughs) Conflicts in society? 30% of the republic rises up against you and that's a con that you see that as a little conflict. Uh, So the announcement comes on the heels of the release uh, from the prisoner Chang Tao Ka, the Hong Kong uh, man who um, whose case prompted the proposed extradition bill in June. That was the scapegoat, right? So Tong Ka, 20, was uh, doing time for money laundering, is suspected of killing his pregnant girlfriend while on vacation in Taiwan last year. But because there was no treaty among Taiwan, China, uh, China and Hong Kong, authorities were not able to bring him back to trial. So Hong Kong leaders proposed the extradition bill. That's bullshit, right? They, you know, that the extradition bill was designed to quiet the good people of Taiwan, uh, uh, Hong Kong down uh, so that they would just obey uh, uh, Beijing rule under the appointed leader, executive uh, Kim Lang, Kim Lam. However, demonstrators in Hong Kong saw the move as an attempt 
by China to start chipping away at democracy, democratic freedoms the city was promised when the former British colony was turned over to China in 1997. Damn right, that's what it's about. The demonstrations morphed into massive uh, pro-democratic uh, demonstrations that have torn the city apart for five months. Uh, Tung Kao vowed to return the, the, the killer, vowed to return to Taiwan to face murder charges, but, is rem- uh, but remains unclear, but it remains unclear if that move and withdrawal of the proposal treaty will stifle protests. It will not. Uh, but uh, so here's a, this is a interesting. I don't usually look at the commentary from Fox, but this was some Republican schmuck said this. This is pretty good. Violent clashes continue between pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. Police as demonstrators uh, took to the streets for the 20th straight weekend. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley recently went to Hong Kong to get a first-hand look at what's happening there and joins us to discuss. Senator, we see the protests taking place in no massive Tiananmen Square-like crackdown. Does that mean they're making progress? Well, I, I wish that were the case, Brian, but in fact, the government there in Hong Kong, which is not elected, by the way, this is a pro-Beijing government, essentially installed by, by Beijing, continues to suspend the right to protest. They won't grant protest permits. They're using violent tactics. Bru- so he, this is a Republican senator from Missouri. He's hitting all good points. It's, a, it's the violent protests. He's saying that it's likely that China will not retreat um, it's there's the unelected officials running the place brutal tactics to disperse the protesters they won't submit to the right to vote hong kong is becoming a police state amen it is it's becoming a police state good points guy and that's bad news for us because we know what china's capable of they've been ripping us off our jobs for years this is bad news what can we do about it that part of it is not true because the the corporations of the united states of america have been ripping us off for years he makes one good point. I want to continue. Well, we've got to stand up and keep the pressure up. You know, President Trump having the trade pressure on China has actually helped Hong Kong. It's actually helped keep Beijing in check. We've got to continue to keep pressure up, say, we're not just going to watch Hong Kong get steamrolled because next it'll be Taiwan and then it'll be the region. And we know what China wants to ultimately do is shut us out of the region and, and take away all of our jobs, our ability to trade. The- that was a that was a mixed bag, but uh, his his observation that Taiwan would be next, and very likely Japan, right? So China will try to steamroll the area. They did it in they did it to Tibet, the part of China that was separated for so many years, and Taiwan is still in the balance. So uh, he makes good points as far as it uh, uh, as far as you know Hong Kong being responsible for. For our job loss, or China being that that's our doing, that's our uh, bad trade policy. So one other note on Hong Kong was that uh, Carrie Lam. There's allegedly a discussion in Beijing to oust her, uh, but it can't be confirmed. After nearly five months of the increased violent protest, Beijing has apparently had enough of Carrie Lam, the Hong Kong executive, who has been lambasted as the piglet to the Chinese. Uh, Xin Jinping, uh, who they call Winnie the Pooh. So, the truth is that uh, well, why not? Why not just get rid of her and have elections? It's not going to happen. So, what else? Let's talk about dead bodies in a truck. This is this shit is crazy, man. So, thirty-nine people found dead in a lorry container in Essex, in Essex, that were Chinese nationals, dead Chinese. Detectives say the trailer containing the victims arrived at Perfleck. Uh, Belgium on Wednesday. Security check for uh, people smuggling are believed to be less stringent at both ports than at uh, Dover. It was uh, initially thought that the lorry arrived into Hollyhead, Wales, Wales earlier on Wednesday morning. The driver, his name is 25-year-old Mo Robinson from Portadown, Portadown. Remains in custody. So they only have one guy. Right? 39 bodies. I'll tell you how they, f- they found them, too. It's pretty interesting. The discovery comes as the number of migrants being smuggled into the UK has risen in the last year. Oh, you got an immigration problem, do you? <laughs> so here's the, uh, here's the headline, right? 
В жизни не всегда случаются радости. Автомобильная авария, травма при падении не... Listen to how stupid these smugglers were. Temperatures in these types of trucks can get as low as minus 25 degrees Celsius. That's fucking cold. Prompting some to speculate that the cooling system may have been turned on accidentally. <laughs> They froze to death. Oh, man. They're not saying that the bodies were mutilated or murdered or bullets in the bodies or poisoned or anything like that. They're just saying that they... They found some bodies. Uh, obviously, if the if that temperature's on, everybody was frozen stiff. Uh, frozen. I mean, if you're in there for a few hours at uh, 25, minus 25 degrees Celsius, you're frozen solid. Uh, in a day or two, two days, you're solid. It's like a brick of ice. You can break them apart with a sledgehammer. Just crack them like fucking ice crack, ice cracking. Really. Richard Burnett, uh, chief executive of the Road Haulage Association, said conditions for anyone inside the truck were absolutely horrendous. So what is this about? This is What does this say about immigration? What does it say about China? People dying to get the hell out of there, right? People trying to get out of there, they get out of there, and what do they find? They find fucking death in a frozen truck. So it's pretty interesting. It doesn't seem to be on... on it doesn't seem to be very peculiar either because it's happened um, before. 58 nationals were found dead in Lorry and Dover uh, from suffocation. 71 were found in an abandoned truck in uh, Austria. <clears throat> It's not good to be a migrant these days. Right? Why don't you stay where you belong? Stay, where, stay in your hometown. Right? So let's watch the, um, the GOP. The GOP do their job. So Trump, they're having an impeachment hearing. You heard in Congress, Adam Schiff is leading a secretive Uh, hearing to impeach the President of the United States without ever taking a vote in Congress to make that happen. You're supposed to vote first, then have hearings, and then vote to decide if you want to impeach, and then pass that on to the Senate, is the way I believe it works. The Senate acts as the jury, right? And if you can get all those people to say yes, then you have an impeachment. But no, Adam Schiff is holding uh, witch witchcraft, witchy, witchy, behind-the-scenes hearings to impeach Trump. And the GOP kicked the door down and uh, barged in. Check this shit out, man. Look at these GOP. Look at them all trying to get their face. Come this way. All trying to get their face on the camera. Oh, man. Where did they get these guys from? They all shop in the same suit store, same haircuts, same shoes. Ah, uh, wow, they did their job. Wow, GOP doing their job. God damn, this fucking guy's cool, right? Listen, listen to this <clears throat> cockhead. What does he have to say? Uh, good morning, this is Congressman Alex Mooney. I'm calling you live from the skiff. It is precisely 1.22 p.m. We came in this morning right after the press conference around 10 a.m. We've been sitting here waiting for the hearings to start. The moment we walked in the room, Chairman Adam Schiff saw us, took the witness, and walked out of the room because they refused to have a hearing in a transparent way for the people of West Virginia's 2nd Congressional District can be aware of what's going on. I represent over 600,000 people in West Virginia who are not given a right to know what's even being said in these hearings as they brazenly attempt for no reason to impeach the President of the United States. I'm proud that over 30 members of Congress, including our uh, whip, Steve Scalise, walked into that room uh, and demanded transparency and justice for our President. Uh, we've been here for hours. Uh, the, the, so by now, all the Democrat members have left, and we're sitting here waiting for the hearing to start. I'm calling you from the skiff on a, on a secure phone right now. We had to give up our cell phones as we were coming in uh, because you couldn't have them there. But, of course, they're not having the hearing anyway. It's, it's just a bunch of Republicans in the room right now uh, waiting for the information uh, so we can represent our constituents. So that's what I'm doing right now, and uh, I'm proud to be standing for our president. <coughs> Good job, mate. Good job, Congressman. 
Good job, Congressman, barging into to the uh, – that's funny. Adam Schiff, they saw, <laughs> they saw the Republicans come through the door. They grabbed the witness, and they ran out the back. I'm Buddy Carter. I have the honor and privilege of representing the 1st Congressional District in Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're an American and you're in within the sound of my voice, regardless of whether you're a Democrat, regardless of whether you're a Republican, or regardless if you consider yourself an independent, regardless if you hate Donald Trump or if you love Donald Trump. If you're an American, you have to be outraged by what is going on here. Since day one, the Democrats have not accepted the fact that Donald J. Trump is president of the United States. Now we find ourselves with them behind closed doors trying to impeach a sitting president. Ladies and gentlemen, if a government can do this to the President of the United States, they can do it to you as well. You need to be scared. You need to be very scared. This needs to stop. It needs to stop right now. Fear. We need open government. This is the United States of America. Please, I beg of you, pay attention, stay focused, keep your eye on the ball. What is happening here? We cannot allow this to go on. Adam Schiff has to stop. Nancy Pelosi has to stop. This process has got to stop, and it has to stop now. It's an illegal process, right? Mind you, if, they wanted, why didn't, if they wanted to do the process of impeachment, why not do it the right way? Why not do it legally? Why not have the vote and see if you have the votes? If you have the votes, just go through with it in a transparent way. What's the big deal? Why all the secret hush-hush shit? Because... Because it's a bogus charge, right? It's a bogus charge. It's based on one piece of paper that says Trump tried to interfere in the 2020 election by by investigating shit sandwich Joe Biden for massive corruption in 2014, 15, 16, right? When he was vice president. That's all it is. And they're trying to, that's what the Democrats do. They try to flip it on you. You, you point out corruption and they say, no, 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 you're the corrupt one. Impeach him. So... Uh, according to Bloomberg, Trump knew of the GOP's lawmakers' plan to barge into the secure hearing room on Capitol Hill, where Democrats are holding secretive impeachment hearings. On Tuesday, Trump met with approximately 30 House Rep- Rep- Republicans at the White House for two hours to discuss the situation in Syria, as well as the impeachment inquiry. During the meeting, lawmakers shared their plans to storm the basement testimony, an action which Trump supported adding that he would he wants the transcripts released because they were they will exonerate him. I think it's good stuff, man. I think it's a good good move. All this secretive shit. Look, you're gonna hold secretive hearings. We're gonna secretive secretively kick your door in and wait until you uh, begin to talk so we can hear what you're saying. So uh, kudos to the GOP. Good job. If you're not doing anything else, at least you did that, right? So very, very, very sad, sad news. So uh, this is um, Craig Murray, the distinguished British man uh, who was sat in, sat in Parliament or something. He's a distinguished guy in England. He's a supporter of free press, free speech, and uh, has always been in Julian Assange's uh, corner. And he visited the court where Julian Assange was dragged into to face his extradition um, charges in the United States. And it wasn't a good scene. So, so here's, um, here's uh, Craig Murray in his own words, in his writing. I was deeply shaken while witnessing yesterday's events in West- Westminster Magistrate Court. Every decision was railroaded through over the, the scarcely heard arguments and objection, objections of Assange's legal team by a magistrate who barely pretended to be listening. Wow. Before I got on the blatant, uh, before I get into the blatant lack of uh, fairness in the process, the first thing I wanted to know was Julian Assange's conditions. I was barely, I was badly shocked by just how much weight my friend has lost, by the speed his hair has receded, by the appearance of premature and vastly accelerated aging. He has a pronounced limp I have never seen before. Since his arrest, he has lost 15 kilograms in weight. Wow, it's about 35 pounds. 
but his physical appearance uh, was not as shocking as his mental deterioration. When asked to give his name and date of birth, he struggled visibly over several seconds to recall both. I will come to... That happens to me sometimes. How about you? <laughs> it's a bad joke, but it's, he forgot his name. I will come to the important content of this statement at the end of the proceedings in due course. But his difficulty in making, making it was very evident. It was a real struggle for him to articulate the words and focus his train of thought. Until yesterday, I, was, I had always been quietly skeptical of those who claimed that Julian Assange's treatment amounted to torture. Even after Neil Menser, the UN uh, Special Rapporteur on uh, Torture, um, said so. And skeptical of those who suggested he may be subject to uh, de de debilitating, debilitating drug treatments. I said that right from the get-go, that he was, he was getting drugged, that they would drug him and try to do a uh, kind of a medical lobotomy on him. I said it, you know, immediately when he started to look sick in jail. So it seems to be true. But having attended the trials in Uz Uzbekistan of several victims of extreme torture and having worked with survivors from, um, from someplace and someplace else, I can tell you that yesterday's, yesterday changed my mind entirely. And Julian exhibited, exhibited exactly the symptoms of a torture victim brought blinking into the light, particularly in terms of disorientation, confusion, and the real struggle to assert free will through the fog of learned hopelessness. So creative. The real struggle to assert free will through the fog of learned helplessness. Excuse me. Helplessness. Uh, he feels helpless, right? It's torture. That's the brand of torture they're using, right? I had been even more skeptical of those who claimed, as a senior member of his legal team, did to me on Sunday that they were worried that Julian Assange might not live to the end of the extradition process. I now find myself only believing it, not only believing it, but haunted by the thought. Everybody in the court yesterday saw that one of, saw one of the greatest journalists and most important descendants of our time being tortured to death by the state before our eyes. To see my friend, the most articulate man and fastest thinker I have ever known, reduced to the scrambling and incoherent wreck was unbearable. Yet the agents, agents of the state, particularly the callous magistrate, were not just prepared but eager to be part of this blood sport. She actually told him that if he were ca incapable of following procedures, then his lawyers could explain what happened to him later. <laughs> You don't know what we're talking about? Ask your lawyer. That's just dope. The question of why a man who the very charges against him was acknowledged to be highly uh, intelligent and competent had been reduced by the state to someone incapable of following court procedures gave her not a millisecond of concern. Uh, so you see, a, you see a person who is known to be extremely articulate and bright reduced to someone who doesn't know their name or the date. And that doesn't bother you. That's, that's the kind of judge you are. You're not, what are you judging? It's crazy. The charge against uh, Assange is very specific, conspiring with Chelsea Manning to publish the Iraq war logs, Afghan war logs, and the State Department cables. The charges have nothing to do with Sweden, nothing to do with sex, and nothing to do with the 2016 U.S. election. A simple clarification in mainstream media appears incapable of understanding. They're just mixing it all together, right? But we know that, right? So it's only, again, so it's a very sad day for Julian Assange. It goes on and on. If you want to go to Craig, Craig Murray's site and read the rest of the letter, there's a lot to it, right? So... Right, so Assange is not in good good shape right now. We had hoped that he should be a free man right now, but he's not, right? Because England's just not having it. They're holding him for for no crime. So he'll probably be in court in February, and um, Craig Murray and the like don't think he's going to make it. It looks like he's he's being drugged. He's being his, his weight is gone. His brain is, you know, his mind is is deteriorating. It's rather sad. Uh, so. 
also Hong Kong fighting back. They're not they're not letting up, and you know China is not going to retreat. So we're going to watch. I think in our lifetime, in the next few years, we're going to watch Hong Kong fold to Chinese rule, and you know maybe half the population um, immigrate probably to Taiwan, probably here too, Canada, United States. Or, uh, you know, Australia, wherever. Wherever there's freedom, they have money, you know, they have a... a uh, the smart ones will leave early, you know, and uh, GOP did their job. GOP storming the uh, storming the gate of secretive hearings in Congress and 29, 20, 39 frozen Chinese in a Chinese takeout in a fucking trailer, man. Shit, it's crazy times, man. Marcus Conte reporting. <laughs>